Hi students, welcome to this Bogilal series of transforming flowcharts or logic developed using flowcharts into their equivalent C programs. So as people looking through this particular playlist should be aware that the logic for this flowchart was explained beautifully by Professor Dr. Kamal Gansala ji. So what I am going to do is taking his flowcharting logic as the input, I am going to show you how easy it is to convert it into a corresponding C program. So let's get started. The first problem which Sir solved was, it says Mr. Bogilal sells mangoes at the rate of 10 per mango. Mohan bought 5 mangoes from Mr. Bogilal. Write a program to generate the bill. So this is quite simple because the cost per mango is given or the rate per mango and the total number of mangoes. So what I am doing here in the flowchart is I am saying bill is simply cost per mango into 5. So let's see what is happening in the program. So same thing is happening in the program. Bill is 10 into 5. In the next stage what I am doing is I am printing the bill. The same here. I am printing the bill as an integer value as bill. So the only thing which you need to keep care or take care in a program is you need to declare variables. So bill I have declared as an integer type because 10 is an integer and 5 is an integer and I am sure the output is going to be an integer. Next when I say stop I am also going to terminate with this particular flower brace. So now you can see a one on one correspondence with your flowchart and program. This step here is taken here. This print is done here. So if you understand logic using flowcharts, you can be sure that doing programming is really going to be very easy. So please do not skip learning logic using either algorithms or flowcharts. In the Bogilal series of flowcharts, let us see what problem number 2 asks us to do. It says that Bogilal sells mangoes at the rate of 10 per mango. Write a program to generate the bill. Obviously, it is just given that the price which Bogilal sells a mango is 10 rupees. But here if you see, the quantity is not given. So the first thing I will need to do here in the flowchart is, I need to ask the user to enter ENM which represents the number of mangoes. Same I am going to do in my program. In step number 1 here and step number 1, you can see the similarity. I am asking the user enter the number of mangoes he or she would like to purchase. So I am reading the number of mangoes into an integer variable called as nm because mangoes cannot be fractional okay you cannot buy half a mango or a quarter mango you have to buy a full mango then i am calculating bill as 10 into number of mangoes so what i am doing is since the price of a mango is fixed i am defining something called as a symbolic constant called as price as 10 so what the preprocessor will do is it will search for all occurrences of this particular string or character called price and it will replace it with 10. So here in the next step if you see I am showing bill is price into number of mangoes. Say if I buy 50 mangoes it's going to show price as 50 into 10 which is going to be bill is going to be 500. So step number 2 matches with step number 2 here. So you can look at how closely there is an interlinking linking between the flowchart logic and the programming logic. Now in the next step what I am doing is I am simply printing the bill. Whereas in the program I just need to write the printf statement and say bill is percentage D and bill. So step number 3 matches with step number 3. Since the cost per mango is 10 and I can only buy full mangoes that's why I have defined bill as an integer and number of mangoes of course has always got to be an integer because I can only buy full quantities of mangoes. Here you can see I have stopped here also I have ended the program. Now hopefully you have got a very good link between how logic is transformed into a piece of code. Continuing on our Bogilal series of problems this particular problem asks us to find the bill amount or calculate or generate the bill. All that it tells us is Mr. Bogilal sells mangoes and we are required to write a program to generate the bill. Since it only tells Bogilal sells mangoes, I need at least two information to calculate the bill. One is the number of mangoes and the next is what is the cost per mango. So what I am going to do here in the first step is I am going to ask or request Mr. Bogilal 
give me the number of mangoes nm stands for number of mangoes and rate stands for the cost per mango so if you look at the corresponding logic here what i have done is step number one has been taken here i have asked the person enter the number of mangoes and the rate per mango let us say number of mangoes is 100 and rate per mango is 8. So in the next step, what is being done in the flow chart is bill is number of mangoes into rate. The same should be here. So here again we have bill is number of mangoes into rate. So far, so good. Then last step in the flow chart is we are simply printing the bill amount and stopping. So same I should be doing here. I am saying step number three is taken here. I am saying bill is percentage D bill. So if you look at it, I had to define all the variables required for calculating the value of the purchase. So bill was an integer, number of mangoes was an integer, rate I assume to be an integer. But you can easily change rate to a real number like saying mango is 7 rupee 50 paise. But nowadays 50 paise has no value. So mostly everybody rounds it up to the next higher rupee. So now if you saw, there is a beautiful correspondence between the flow charting logic and the program. So again, just to re-emphasize, please master logic before you come to write programs. We shall now transform another flow chart which was developed by the president sir into the corresponding program. Here, what sir had done it, he had shown you two ways in which given an input three numbers, how to find the average. So what he had done is in order to find the average of three numbers, first the user is being asked to enter the three numbers. So here similarly what I'm going to do here is I am going to ask the user enter the three numbers whose average is to be calculated. So I am reading the first number into n1, the second number into n2 and the third one into n3. That's why I have defined all of these as n1, n2 and n3. So you can see a one on one correspondence between this, this and this. Then next what I am doing here is I am calculating average as n1 plus n2 plus n3 divided by 3. So same here, average is n1 plus n2 plus n3 divided by 3.0. The reason all these are integers, so I am dividing it by 3.0 because I want the average to be a floating point number because average of 3 plus 3 plus 2 may not end up being a full number. It's going to be fractional. So by doing 3.0, all these are added and divided by a floating point number. The result is turning out or going to turn out to be a real number. That real number is assigned to average and average which is assigned here is the same which is done here. Next step, I'm simply going to print average of those three numbers. Just see how it is here done here. Here again, we are saying average of three numbers is equal to percentage of average. And then we are going to terminate the program. Same here, we are going to stop. So just need to be careful of few things here. If you forget to put the bracket here, you're going to end up in problem because it is first going to divide N3 by 3.0 and then the result of N1 plus N2 is going to be added to that division result. So I believe sir has beautifully explained what are the common mistakes you make. You do not have a complete over takeover like the maths. You have to use parentheses or brackets when in doubt.